Well, hello again, folks. This vlog episode is going to be a mishmash of a few different things. That's because what I'm doing today is a mishmash of a few different things. Imagine that, huh? <laughs> um, for starters, I'm going to try and do a cob job repair to my chainsaw. I really got to get this thing going. I don't have the parts on hand. I'm not a nuts and bolts guy, but like I said several times, when you live up in the woods, you got to fix things. You got to fix it however you can fix it and with whatever you have on hand. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do this morning. And then following that, I will revisit the topic that I shared with you last week. Last week, uh, I spoke of a money-saving tactic that we use with our credit cards, how we earn cash back rewards from the simple process of paying our bills. All right, I've been flooded with questions, mostly repeat questions on that topic. I said that I would revisit it this week, so that's what I'm going to do. And if there's still time, maybe I'll cover a few other different things that we've been up to. We are out of hibernation and really busy and getting things done. Well, I should say getting a lot of things started. Yeah, we are back to work on the project on the other property. Uh, kind of slow out of the gate, but we're back to work on it. I had said that we were going to enclose that one-third of the carport section. Well, we've got that framed up, got it all enclosed, got the window in. We are ready to start wiring and insulating the inside. And of course, I will bring you up to speed on that project. Because uh, we're, we're anxious to get that all done. I'm going to order a garage door and get that whole building enclosed. And then get it wired and insulated. And we got a, a lot of work ahead of us. Yeah. So anyway, I'm going to get my stuff out and try to fix this chainsaw. So wish me luck. <laughs> I showed you a while ago I needed to fix my chainsaw. Well, I haven't done it yet, and I don't know if I can. I'm going to try. This is a Husky 345. I don't know if they make them like this anymore. This is actually my favorite chainsaw. I've had it for maybe 15 years, 12 to 15 years, give or take. Last fall, we are cutting all our firewood, had a pile of firewood. I put the saw up on the pile of firewood. I was backing up my ranger, you know, looking out the back, backing up and turning. And I didn't notice that that saw must have fallen off of the firewood. And I hate to admit it, but I ran the freaking thing off. Freaking human, right? You know? Yeah. So, my trigger assembly broke. There's a broken piece in there or a whole bunch of broken pieces in there Hold on. so you have to compress this to before you run the trigger and then I see down inside the slot there's a little orange tab so I'm gonna pull this down and get it hooked under that orange tab like that and then jam something in there to hold it there and tape it into place and I think it's going to work. Since I have all these broken pieces, I don't know where they belong. But it appears that if I can hold that lever down, that appears to work like it should. I'm going to find something to put in there that I can remove easily and we'll see. So remember I did a video a while back? How I categorize all of my fasteners and all the little doodads in my workshop. Uh, so I need something. So I got my ledger and something starts with an S. So I'm going to look on the S and see what I come up with for something. I'm just kidding. <laughs> anyway, I went to my workshop and I found this... Uh, 
this hose clamp was on my bench and it's all buggered up. I think if I squish that so it fits in that slot then this part can go over my handle and I can tape it in place it'll probably work and then I can remove it later if it doesn't work. You have to have, have, have a backup plan. So here we go. I figure this pipe clamp will hold that lever in place and it'll be easy to remove if it doesn't. <laughs> nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? <laughs> Alright, so I got my little thing here and I've got everything bent the way I want it. Fit that right in there. I think this is going to work. It appears that it's going to work. So I'm going to just put it in, tape it in place, see how it goes. Then if it does work, then I'm going to just tape it in place even better, make it more secure. And there's no way to fasten this any other way, really. So the tape is the way to go. But what I'm going to use, I got this metal tape. This is all metal tape. This stuff, I recommend everybody have a roll of it. All right. Um, you might have a little rust hole in your car and it won't pass inspection because of it. Tape the hole, put a little paint over it, and you'll pass inspection. <laughs> All right? They might overlook it. But this stuff is so handy to have. I use it on all my stovepipe applications, my metal bestest chimney, when it goes through the roof, and then you have that rain collar. I tape that on, keeps it waterproof. I had a crack in a chimney flange before, an aluminum one, and I fixed it with this. Now this stuff, this is the 3M brand. I'm going to put a link to it in the description below. Get, a, get yourself a roll. It's so many uses for it. This is a lighter duty stuff. It's got a backing on it that you peel off. I think I found this in the tape section at Walmart. It's not as durable. I wouldn't use it on a chimney type application. But this is what I use when I'm taping the seams on the bubble foil. You see me put the bubble foil down, and then I tape the seam before I cover it up. So I use the lighter duty stuff for that. This stuff, I don't want to be without it. So I get the little lever, the little spring lever held down. I'm going to put that right next to that tab to hold it in place. And then, I'm going to put that over it. This is really, really good tape. Such a small investment, but it's a quick fix for so many things. This is just to see if it works, and if it works, I'll probably put a piece of rubber over this and then tape it a little bit better. All right, there's a little bit of gas in the saw, probably enough to get it going. All right, let's see if it's fixed. I don't know what the chickens will think of it. Last week with the video I said I wasn't sure if I was going to buy all pork and come down here and get some fresh chicken. Now every time I come down here they're all going, get pork, pork, pork. <laughs> Getting them back. Everything seems to be working like it should. I fixed it with a pipe clamp, some tape, and a piece of rubber boot. I wonder what the chainsaw shop would have charged me for this repair. Yeah, poor. Get poor. That's what they're saying. <laughs> All right, when I gotta fix something, I can't just run to town every time I need a nut or a bolt or a a wine cork or whatever it is I need to do a repair so I have a lot of stuff on hand and in the video I spoke of a minute ago I showed you how to categorize all your stuff and find all your little doodads alright because a lot of guys like me get frustrated you know you have the stuff you can't find it so you run to town and you buy more of it alright so I got my ledger I want some pieces of rubber all right, let's see, under R, we got rubber washers, rubber head roofers, roofing nails, rubber pieces are in PJ27. 
PJ stands for a pickle jar in this camp. PJ 27 rubber pieces. Okay, I won't lie to you folks, I'm getting tired of moving this tripod around. All kinds of rubber pieces. See, this is pieces off of a rubber boot. In fact, this is what I'm going to use, I think, to repair my snowshoe. We'll see. There's a little piece right there. Let's give it a go. You know, I had those old rubber boots, those cheap Pro-Line boots, you know, they lasted a season or two or something like that. And then I cut them up and I saved a little rubber pieces and I can't tell you how many times I have gone to that pickle jar and used pieces of those boots. And I showed you um, last summer, I think it was, and I fixed my back hole with pieces of a rubber boot and a rubber wine cork. That's my dad's ingenuity coming out in me. <laughs> so I have the rubber pad held on with the Gorilla Tape and I think I'm going to like this better than it was before because the handle's a little fatter and I have a cushioned grip. Um, I just, I like the way it feels. Yeah. So we'll see how long it lasts and if it doesn't work out then I'll just peel everything back and order the parts and do a proper repair but hey we'll see how it goes so it's mission accomplished once again and I'm just gonna put everything away where put it where it belongs okay the scissors go right there where they're handy needle nose pliers razor knife goes there and the trusty doodad ledger goes right here where it belongs and PJ number 27 goes right between 26 and 28. And I am growing partial to the color blue. <laughs>Okay, I said I would revisit the topic on the credit cards and answer the questions that came in. And the number one question that came in is, what credit card do I use? Well, to be honest with you folks, I'm not real comfortable with telling the whole world what credit cards I have. And it probably wouldn't do you any good anyway, because offers change all the time. And different offers go out to different people with different credit ratings. So... What I suggest is do a little bit of research on your own, okay? Just Google cashback rewards cards and start off looking at banks that you have heard of before. In the past, I have used credit cards from Citibank, from Capital One, um, big names like that, and had the same results as I'm getting now with the bank I'm using now. And it's I earn cash rewards on the purchases that I make just as long as I pay my credit card in full every single month and never ever let that balance roll over from month to month. Because as soon as you do that, you're not winning anything, you're losing and you're paying interest like all the other credit cards in the world. Okay, So losing money isn't what this video is about. <laughs> Okay, so last week I showed you that I had a check in my hand given to me from the credit card company for paying my bills. It was $451 and we went out and we bought groceries with it. But what I did was I deposited that check. We went out and bought the $451 with the credit card and I earned nine more dollars by doing so. Okay. And we didn't buy 451 pounds of pork. We bought a little bit of pork and ground it. And some people thought that um, my video was about pork. But you know how it goes. Anyway, so what you want to look for, or what I look for in a cashback rewards card. No annual fee. I don't want to pay an annual fee. I don't want any expiration date on the earnings, meaning I don't want to have to use my earnings and have an expiration date on it because I might forget some time and then I lost all my earnings. I lost them before I used them. I don't want that to happen. I want no expiration date and no cap on the earnings. 
I don't want it to be cut off when it gets to $500 or whatever. I want to be able to save them up until I feel like spending them. So we got no annual fee, no cap on the earnings, and no expiration date on the earnings. Okay. I also want to make sure that the bank is offering the highest rewards on the categories that I'm going to use. If you read through the comments on last week's video, you will see that a lot of people use this strategy. And there's a lot of them that they don't get cash rewards, they get air miles. And then they go on their yearly vac vacation for free airfare. That's perfect. Okay? For myself, that wouldn't work because I don't fly anywhere. I want cash in my hand that I can spend on absolutely anything. But most times we spend it on groceries. Okay? I want to make sure that they're offering at least 2% rewards on gas and groceries. The bank that I have offers 1% on general purchases, 2% on gas, groceries, and pharmacy items, and then 3%. I think it might be on travel or something. I'm not really sure what that one was. But gas and groceries, hey, uh, instead of going in and paying the cash, I use the card and I earn cash back. And it works for us. If I just run into a store for a six pack of beer or something, I pay cash for that. I don't use the card for five or ten dollar purchases. Okay? Anyway. So make sure that when you're shopping for a card, you're going with a reputable name. Like I said, Citibank, Capital One, uh, American Express, names that you have heard of before. Don't go with some off-the-wall name, and I don't care what they offer me. I don't want to put my finances in the hands of somebody I've never heard of. Okay? Now, last but certainly not least, before I commit to a credit card, I get all this information online or in an offer in the mail and I look at it and it get all the things that I just mentioned. Before I commit, I'm going to call the bank. And if I have a really hard time talk, getting a representative to talk to, game over. I don't want anything to do with them. Because if I have a credit card with them and I have a like maybe my bill came in and it showed that they didn't get my check last month or some issue I want to be able to get a representative on the phone and get it fixed okay I don't want to be jerked around so if I call them now I can ask all the questions to make sure that my understanding is correct there's no annual fee there's no expiration date on the earnings, no cap on the earnings, blah, 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 everything that I just mentioned. I have a human being that I'm talking to in English, and everything's good, I'll commit, and I get the card. And I have been very happy. I've been playing this credit card game for a long time, for a couple decades at least, and actually maybe, maybe pushing... 30 years. It's been a long time that I've been doing this. I've had cards with companies like Cabela's where you earn free goods, you know, instead of cash. They give you stuff. So whatever works for you, all right? The air miles for someone who travels, that's great, okay? It all translates to cash, really, because if you didn't get the free air miles, you'd be spending cash on the plane's tickets, right? All right. So, Hopefully that answers your questions. Again, I just will reiterate the importance that you have to pay the credit card bill in full every month and never carry a balance from month to month. And you'll be earning the free groceries or whatever just like we do. Yeah, man. So that's it for now, folks. All the best to you and God bless. And the boss out walking in the woods Living life happy and free Tracks in the snow everywhere they go There's a pokey way up in that tree 
A beaver built a pond where they have some fun Taking life a day at a time Best friends until the end Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss